Welcome back to how to build an advanced PLC trainer with analog uh, part 2 or version 1.1 which means there's a 1.0 and you need to watch that first and before you watch that you should watch uh, a couple other videos first on the electrical characteristics of back planes in the physics playlist. Anyway if this is where you want to be we're continuing on uh, from where we left off. As you notice the title said with analog. So we have yet to do the analog module. To accommodate an additional module in our graphic we will need to slide and tighten everything to different areas of the screen. This is the wiring diagram for the inputs of this particular module. So what we've added is a 1769 IF4, four analog inputs, X, OF2, two analog outputs. And typical, this manufacturer uses brown for inputs and amber or yellow for outputs. So we've divided up the module color scheme. And the diagram we have up right now is strictly for analog inputs. And um, this particular module is really if you're buying your hardware online used, one of these is typically more expensive than a separate analog input and a separate analog output. Uh, this is a more convenient module if you have limited panel space. However, if this is just your training hardware, then um, myself, I purchased separate input and output analog cards. Um, developing the RS Logix 5000 manual, which is what I built this hardware trainer for, I happen to have one of these modules, an IF4X OF2. So I wanted everything to match across the board. So in our little wiring diagram there, illustrates both the connections for a current and a voltage application. In the field, 4 to 20 milliamps is the most practical because zero is invalid. So if you ha have an open conductor in your input circuit, you'll get zero milliamps and the system immediately knows that that's not valid. So it gives you a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So the top part of that shows how to connect up a current signal and then right below it voltage signal. We're going to do voltage signals. I have thousands of hours of experience with sensors, both digital and analog, and I hope to produce a series of presentations on that subject once I have completed the RS Logix 5000 manual and the videos that support it. For our analog voltage inputs, we will use the absolute most inexpensive option in case you decide to build one of these. A potentiometer, or what your friends probably call a volume control. The actual voltage scale for the analog input is 0 to 10 volts and we have a uh, 24 volt DC power supply available to us. Now you could add an additional power supply, 10 volt power supply, but in this case we're just going to use a voltage divider. So we cannot meter 0 to 24 volts DC into our analog input so we need to drop 14 of the 24 volts to provide the correct range. This is done with a very inexpensive carbon resistor in series with the potentiometer as seen here. Yes, that means that that dropping resistor above the pot, the potentiometer, we people call them POTS, P-O-T, short for potentiometer. The dropping resistor above the potentiometer has a resistance of 140 percent of that of the pot or 1.4 times the resistance of the pot. If the pot is 100k then you need 140k of dropping resistor and if you think of that ratio 14 140k and 10k that's a total of 240k across 24 volts that gives you 10 volts across 100k for the potentiometer. <clears throat> The higher the total resistance, the better to keep the impedance up. However, that is a subject for another day, not today. 
This type of circuit is referred to as a voltage divider. Next we will attach our 24 volt DC power supply. both negative and positive to give us a complete circuit for current to flow through our voltage divider. This is our analog input and you can duplicate the voltage divider up to four of these with this module. So you could have four potentiometers each giving you a unique analog input. Two is normally what I use on this type of a demo. This is the wiring diagram for this particular module for the outputs, the other half, the bottom half. For our analog voltage outputs, we will use the absolute most inexpensive option in case you dec decide to build one of these. A 0 to 10 volt DC meter, or what your friends call a gauge. The module is supplying the output voltage to the meter by controlling the 24 volt DC applied at the top of the module. So the module is designed to work with 24 volts DC. Now we don't show the 24 volt DC connection right now, uh, but it would simply be a matter of bringing um, that 24 volts over. Uh, it depends on the kind of module, whether it's an external power or internal. I think with this particular module uh, that we can use external or internal power. There's a switch in the card um, that allows you to pick voltage off the back plane or external voltage. Nonetheless, we'll leave that off. Next, we attach um, to our 10 volt meter, we attach the common and the positive. So the, we use the same DC common uh, for both the input and the output. This is our analog output and you can duplicate this circuit once for a total of two outputs with this module. Two is normally what I use for this type of a demo. Now let's add another rung of logic to our program. I left the two rungs in there we had before for the digital in, digital out, and I'm using a MOV instruction. Now this is a simple rung of logic with no conditions. There's no true or false conditions. It's called an unconditional rung, meaning that it's always true. So the MOV instruction will execute every single program scan. Most people call this a move instruction, but it's really not a move, it's a word copy. There's also a COP instruction, which is a file copy. It copies more than one word. A move instruction copies one word. And it's not a move because when you move something, it's not where it used to be. So this instruction takes and copies the source word to the destination word. So as you can see, we are copying the input of slot three, I colon 3.0, the first word of slot three, to the first word of slot three output. So that particular module in memory has an I file for inputs and an O file for outputs. So we are simply in the logic taking what chem comes in from the potentiometer and copying it right back out to the meter. If you're not familiar with a potentiometer, maybe that symbol threw you for a loop. That's the squiggly line with the arrow pointing to it. The arrow touching the resistance symbol in the voltage divider. This represents the wiper arm in the pot. As you rotate the shaft of the pot, potentiometer, the wiper arm moves up and down the resistance, dividing the 10 volts DC within a range of 0 to 10 volts. If the arrow is all the way at the bottom, then you get zero volts in to the card. If it's all the way at the top, you get 10 volts in. Okay, we're going to make one more uh, move of our modules here, and we're going to put them in order of slot number. Processor, slot one, slot two, slot three, but we left some space so we can drop the modules back, or the, the I.O. back in. So, 
In this particular case, we have an L35E processor, 1769 OP16P output card, DC output card, a 1769 IQ16F DC input card, and a 1769 IF4X OF2 combination analog input output card. And of course we left the space so we could slowly let our uh, componentry drift back in to this box. Next up, this, this will be basically the wrap up for the, we'll call it the technology behind the demo box. So we thank you for watching Building an Advanced Trainer with Analog 1.1. You watch 1.0, this is 1.1, continue on with 1.2. 1.2 is going to be a series of video clips of actually assembling the box.